I call him my miracle baby. He almost didn't make it into this world. I can remember so many times when I almost lost him. It was so hard. Well, he's all grown up now, and I still worry about his health. You know, with all our family's been through, we have to be tough. Timmy, we're trying to tell our story here. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mom. <laughs> I was pregnant with Timmy in the Philippines, and I had had amoeba, which is quite serious. It's the leading cause of death in the Philippines, and I was very dehydrated, very sick. When I went to the doctor where we lived, she advised me that I needed to have an abortion. We already had four children, and I just prayed, uh, said, God, if you uh, want another preacher in this world, give him to me, and I'll raise him. Uh, we thought we'd lost the baby about four times. He's a miracle baby, and so we have reminded him that hundreds of times. Well, my priorities in life are number one, uh, my faith in God. Um, number two, my family and my relationships with my family. Um, number three is academics, and number four is football. You know, if those get jumbled around and you get the wrong one first, you know, you could have a lot of problems. For me, you know, trying to stay grounded, you know, that's the best way to do it is have your priorities and try to live by them. Character? Uh, character is, uh, I mean, it's about as good as you can have. I mean, he's uh, a strong Christian. He believes in all the right things. He treats women with respect. He's uh, a guy that you want around your family. He's an uh, impeccable character. Through everything that I do in football, in school, and just living, you know, I want people to see that in me. I don't just want to be another guy who, who, who's walking down the street. I don't want to see when people see me, they say, hey, there's something different about this guy. And that's because he has a relationship with Jesus Christ. I think he is more of a legend on campus in some people's eyes because they, they see this mythical figure, Tim Tebow, the guy who performs on Saturdays, who can dive into the end zone, who can run over tacklers and um, do unhuman-like things, and so they think of him as an unhuman-like person. And scripture says what is desirable in a man is his kindness, and so we just love that quality about Timmy. It's real precious to us. You just talked about your faith being number one, family number two, academics number three, football number four. We've all seen your passion for number four. I can't imagine one, two, and three. <laughs> well, I had a strong family and a family that, you know, put the right priorities in front of me when I was young, a dad who, who put character in front of me and lived it out daily, and, you know, a mom who taught me uh, scripture verses every day, and brothers and sisters who I got a chance to watch grow up in front of me, and I got to just follow in their footsteps. You're a hero not only on the campus but in the state. I don't know if I've ever seen a player affect a team and a stadium the way you did last year and you did this year, but you're the most humble guy I've ever met. What's the key to that? Well, you know, God gave me the ability to play football, and I'm just trying to go out there and honor him with it and just put, be as passionate and enthusiastic about it as I can. From now on, your name will be followed by the words Heisman Trophy winner. Without further ado, the winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is Tim Tebow. <laughs> I'd just like to first start off by thanking my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave me the ability to play football and gave me a great family and a support group and great coaches and everything around me. That's how I'd like to start off. And I saw the big embrace from Danny Werfel when you came up the stage. As a little kid, watching him win the 1996 Heisman Trophy, coached by Steve Spurrier of the Gators. What does it mean to join that guy's club? It means a lot. You know, when I was young, my mom and my family were looking for good role models for me, and they picked out Danny Werfel, and we fell in love with him. We loved watching him, and how he, you know, more importantly, how he handed off the field with his character and integrity and his humility. And you know, he was a great, great role model for me, and I just want to thank him for that because, you know, uh, just watching him, you know, gives me an opportunity to, to look at someone and try to do it the right way like him. You know, everybody, they, they talk about, well, can you handle the pressure or can you do this? You know, what pressure? I'm playing a game I love at a university I love and getting an education for free. What pressure is that? You know, pressure is when you're, you're looking for food or you're going to die, you know. Uh, pressure is when you're in a third world country and, and you're, you're not sure where you're going to get your next meal. That's pressure. Playing football is not pressure. You're playing a game you love. And that puts everything in perspective. It puts what you're doing, whether you win or lose. Yeah, it hurts and, and you're disappointed because you love playing it. You're very passionate about it. But still, you, you can get over it because, you know, I'd rather lose a football game 
than not know where I'm going to get my next meal. And it just puts everything in perspective and it gives you a, uh, a sense of reality. And so many people can get caught up in football and how great a game it is and how you know, meaningful it is. And yes, it is, but, but it's not the whole world. Tebow waiting for the snap. There it is. He runs right. He's hit. He's going to be short. He didn't get it. And the Rebels take over at the 32-yard line. Stunned silence here at Florida Field. Wow. I thought we had a good mindset. I thought we had a good game plan. You know, we just, uh, you know, we didn't start out great, but then we got momentum going and, and we got some, some points up there, got the lead, and then, you know, um, had those turnovers, that stuff we never do. And, um, and then that kind of just, I don't know, it, I think it maybe took away a little, a little confidence in us and just the momentum. And uh, for the next few drives, we weren't playing like the Florida Gators. You know, that's. Something you still, you want as a quarterback, the opportunity, two minutes in, to go in the game and have a shot to lead your team down for the victory. And the whole, the whole time had 100% um, percent, um, trust and in, in, in faith in my team and myself that we we're going to drive down and score. And, um, and I still, you know, fourth of one did. Um, that's, that's something that very, very rarely we get stopped on fourth and one. It's kind of a little been a little bit of our, um, you know, um, Swaggers that we can convert always on fourth and one, and you know we've done it for the last two years, and um, they they beat us to it, they beat us. I wanted to stay in our hearts and keep hurting um, because this will motivate me um, uh, personally, and I think believe everybody else, the coaches and the rest of the players, um, to never let something like this um, happen again, um, especially when we feel we're better than the team and. Um, don't play up to our ability. And uh, I just want to say one thing um, to the fans and everybody in Gator Nation. Um, I'm sorry. Um, extremely sorry. You know, we were hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal. Something four has never done here. But I promise you one thing. A lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season, and you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season, and you never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. After the Ole Miss game, I mean, we got a plaque now up. What is that like to have the message that you sent talked about so much? It almost loses its effect because it's talked about so much. What's that like to have that up there while you're still a player? I think it, it's really cool and it's really special, but not for, you know, me going to say it, but I think, you know, what it represents is so cool. Um, you know, how our team bounced back from that loss uh, to go in the rest of our games and win a championship together. Uh, not the prettiest team, but the team who cared the most about each other and cared the most about what we were doing. And that's why we were able to win the championship. 2007, you broke a lot of SEC records and Florida records, and you yeah, won the Heisman the Trophy, SEC championship. and you didn't win the championship. The next year, you didn't win the Heisman, and you won the national championship in the SEC. In your mind, I'm gonna take that. when did you have the better year? It, you, individually, when did you have the better year? 2008, winning the national championship. I think you're, you're judged on winning games and being a winner. I think that's more important than stats anyway. So um, I think I would choose 2008 hands down as a better year. One thing everybody always wonders about teams that win championships is do they lose their edge? How are you going to make sure this year this team coming off of a championship doesn't great rest leadership. on what you did? By great leadership. Leaders have to do a great job this year because, uh, you know, that – that is there, that complacency of how we did it. Um, and the leaders, myself and Spikes and the guys, we can't let that happen. Um, and it doesn't just start uh, when the games start. It doesn't, you know, we didn't win the national championship on January 8th. We won the national championship in May, June, and July by our hard work then. It's an honor to be uh, 
you know, mentioned and talked about for people to talk about you. Um, and then you think about it, you know, as a perspective that you have the ability and opportunity and a platform, you know, because people talk about you and you're your quarterback at the University of Florida, you have the opportunity and that responsibility to influence other people. And, you know, that's more important than playing football and that's more important than scoring touchdowns or even winning a Heisman Trophy. Um, but, but doing all those things, that's what gives you the platform, you know, to influence people and, you know, to, to change somebody's life for the better. And it's sort of the essence of Christianity, so I thought when people say, hey, what's that verse, they look at this one, uh, you know, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll see it and, uh, and hopefully, you know, some people look at it who might not. Go ahead and quote it verbatim right now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life.